interviews from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe in horror 911 the planes hit the towers and the towers came down did you ever wonder how they fell so fast well maybe that's a question that we're not supposed to ask you think it's strange there were no fighter jets did someone give the order not to intercept and if they really scrambled then why'd they fly so slow maybe there's an answer that we don't want to know Where was our president, George W. That fool? He was visiting with children at an elementary school. And when he heard the news, he didn't seem concerned. He just calmly read a picture book while all those people burned. The Bushes and Bin Ladens. Now what's that all about? While all of us were grounded, they flew his family out. Osama got his training from the CIA. Our soldiers took Afghanistan and they let him slip away. A new Pearl Harbor was their big chance to launch two wars that they'd planned in advance. Now we know they lied about weapons in Iraq. Did they allow the 9-11 attack? your views from television news you'll only hear stories that corporations choose you'll only get to see what they want you to see you're gonna have to read and decide what you believe Hello, this is 9-11 was an inside job once again. And uh, if there are any government officials listening, or if you are listening for some government officials, I have a little message for you to give these government officials. It's time for you to take a look around you and realize that over 100 million people in the United States don't believe the 9-11 Commission report. That's a tremendous political power. 9-11 uh, is growing exponentially. And if you don't decide real soon 
to join the 9-11 group, you're going to be known as somebody that the 9-11 group had to fight to get the truth. In an unprecedented so act of censorship, you do the what the others spent in All around the world, people are now jumping onto the 9-11 truth bandwagon, including all kinds in of people here in the United States. Uh, by the way, get your pens and pencils ready. Uh, remember, during 9-11, on 9-11, uh, they had a four-day 9-11 film festival going on in New York and I viewed most of those films and I'm going to have three of them played for you but right now I've got playback times for two of them and I'll read them to you you should grab a pencil and paper and write them down if you want want to take a good look in the meantime while you're getting your pencil and paper ready or maybe you're recording this we're going to go to CG2 on that 1016 page uh, that's the a virus warning now that's this number two. Yeah, there it is. Can you go ahead and take me out. Oh, that's not the virus warning. It's number two is what we want. Yeah, there it is. Um, what we have here is I got this email. I crossed off the name of the person I got it from. And this came just before 9 11. Uh, or, well, what is it? September 27th, I think. I guess it came right after 9-11. But anyway, the point is it was warning about emails that might contain the words 9-11 or World Trade Center or things like that. You can read it for yourself up there. But this is just an example of putting fear into people. You know, spread the virus warning. It, it says on there that it'll wipe out your C drive. And then on the very last paragraph, it without changing the virus, it doesn't wipe out the C drive. It disassembles your dynamic link library. Well, that effectively stops your computer from working, but it does not erase your C drive. So it, it, this is suspicious in the first place. A virus warning usually should be written by somebody that's in the know about what's going on with the virus. It's clear that nobody knew about this one. So it was clearly to keep people from opening any information that they might have received about 9-11. Now, here's, I'm going to quickly go through the times here. Of, uh, sorry, I didn't make up a CG for it ahead of time, but uh, if there's a movie. These are both German-made films. This shows you that the movement's moving all around the world. Uh, this is called 9-11 False Flag. It'll show Monday, October 25th at 9.45 p.m. on Channel 22. Friday, October 29, 10.15, Channel 22. Monday, November 1st, 8 p.m., Channel 23. And Thursday, November 4th, 6 p.m., Channel 23. The other movie is another German-made movie. It's called War Promises. Both of these are excellent movies. You should really watch it. You can get these on the internet, too. Um, War Promises is on Monday, 10.25, 8.30 p.m., Channel 22. Wednesday, 10.27, at 7 p.m. on Channel 23. Friday, 10.29, at 9 p.m. on 22. And Tuesday, November 2nd, 10 p.m., Channel 23. Well, that takes care of those announcements and if you missed any of that I'm sure you can you know go to pcmtv.org and look up their schedule for next week and uh, you should be able to find those they're listed under 9-11 uh, film festival now um, <clears throat> I guess we'll get into that put on CG number three and uh, remember I talked about last show about the Pentagon buying up what, 10,000 copies of a, of a book and burning them? That was, uh, they're burning a book revealing able danger, as you can see here. The Pentagon has burned 9,500 copies of Army Reserve Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer's memoir, Operation Dark Heart. His book is about going undercover in Afghanistan, um, but he, he goes beyond Afghanistan and he talks about, well, Project Able Danger, which is the uh, data mining project keeping track of al-Qaeda and the bin Laden, other CIA assets before 9-11. And uh, 
when they found, you know, information on Mohammed Atta, the supposed ringleader of 9-11, the FBI told him to stand down. Don't report that. Don't follow up on it. And, you know, everybody's so concerned. Why not? Why not? Well, the actual answer is that you can't blame somebody for a crime if they're in jail at the time the crime was committed. So if you're going to have somebody be a patsy, you have to make sure they stay out of jail before the crime is committed. So obviously all those Arabs carousing, you know, with the strippers and things like that were protected by the FBI so they wouldn't get, you know, prematurely arrested. <clears throat> well, we're going to play a DVD cut to go with this now. Um, we're playing cut two, and I'm going to let it play right through to cut three. Now, cut two is is a little news report about this able danger thing, and cut three is an interview with the author of Operation uh, Dark Heart himself. So this will be a total of about 16 or 17 minutes. So enjoy. This is really good. In an unprecedented act of censorship, the Pentagon spent an estimated $47,000 of taxpayer money to buy and burn copies of an Army officer's memoir. The book, Operation Dark Heart, details Lieutenant Colonel Anthony Schaefer's tour in Afghanistan, where he worked with the Defense Intelligence Agency. The DIA says the book contained classified information and therefore could compromise national security. But Schaefer says everything in the book was in the public domain. By all accounts, it did not get authorized at the higher military military intelligence levels of the Pentagon, once those folks saw it, they got concerned and said that indeed there was classified information in it, and they had to cut up and destroy the initial run of this book. This is the internet age, uh, you know, things go up in cyberspace, and there's really no such thing as permanent destruction of knowledge. So there's a lot of concern that there still are copies floating around out there. The book will be re-released in its redacted form, meaning it's been stripped of some 200 parts the Defense Intelligence Agency deems classified. So what was the problem with the book? Fox News focuses on a few examples. Part of the book does deal with intelligence information that Mohammed Atta was identified as a threat to the U.S. before the 9-11 attacks occurred. Now, Atta, of course, was the ringleader of the attacks and piloted one plane that did hit the World Trade Center. Another example, the word SIGINT. Anybody here in Washington knows that stands for Signals Intelligence, but apparently the DIA thinks you shouldn't know about that. A Voice of Russia article calls the censorship attempt, quote, archaic in such a digital age and points out original copies of the book did make it past the book burning. The American military pledged to pay Anthony Schaefer for his work after people refused to buy the incomplete book. Meanwhile, one of the salesmen at the eBay auction says he's ready to sell the unedited book for $2,000. Anchors on Sacramento's KTXL share a laugh at the censorship attempt, saying it doesn't even make sense the Pentagon would even consider taking that route. They're afraid uh, it may... Uh... Uh, have a negative effect on national security that they they accidentally allowed them to publish classified information. Well, and so me. there's nothing now, the better the, nothing better the Pentagon could have done for sales than to do that. Well, right. That's what we can't figure out. Well, well, for one thing, what good is that going to do? The only thing you're going to do is make people that had never heard of the book run out and buy a copy. But to the New York Times, who broke the story, it's less funny than it is troubling. Reporter Scott Shane says it comes on the heels of other high-profile cases of attempted censorship. The Obama administration is cracking down on disclosures of classified information to the news media, pursuing three such prosecutions to date. Separately, the military has charged an army private with giving tens of thousands of classified documents to the organization WikiLeaks. For Newsy.com, I'm Christina Hartman. Multiple sources, the real story.